In this video, we learn about simultaneous equations which have either no solutions or an infinite number of solutions. And to learn about them, we're going to be working through two examples, the first of which we see here. And in each case, I'll be showing you what kind of result we get when we solve by elimination as well as by substitution, and how to interpret the result, or lack of result we're getting, with straight line graphs. So let's get started. For this first example, we're told to solve for x and y the two equations we see here, x minus y equals to negative 4, and 3x minus 3y equals to 6. Well, as always, when solving a pair of simultaneous equations like these, I start by labeling or naming the two equations I have, so I'll call the first one e1 for equation 1, and the second one e2. Okay, let's say I solve this by elimination, for which I could choose to eliminate the y's from these equations. And looking at them, we quickly notice that the first equation only has one y, and the second one has three y's. So to attempt to eliminate the y's from these equations, I'll multiply this entire first equation by three, to end up with three y's. And so I'll quickly write that, I'll multiply the first equation e1 by three. So let's see. The left-hand side of the equation will become three times x, so that's three x, minus three times y, so that's three y. And so I'll write that, we'll have 3x minus 3y, and that will equal to 3 times the right-hand side of the equation. So that's 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12. And that's our new equation 1. And the second equation, well, it remains unchanged. So 3x minus 3y, which equals to 6. And that's e2. Next, to eliminate the unknown that I chose, so in this case that was y, I need to combine these two equations, either by adding them together or subtracting one from the other, in such a way that the y terms we have here disappear. And since the 3y in the first equation and the 3y in the second equation both have the same sign in front of them, in this case a minus, to eliminate them I'll subtract one equation from the other. And so I'll do e2 minus e1. You could of course do e1 minus e2, it doesn't matter. So I'll do e2 minus e1. Okay, so subtracting this first equation from the second one, on the right-hand side we'll have 3x minus 3x, which is 0, and negative 3y minus negative 3y. And I'll just write that one out, it's a bit more complicated, so negative 3y minus negative 3y, and that's equal to 6 minus negative 12. And I'll write that as well, 6 minus negative 12. Now on the left-hand side we have negative 3y minus negative 3y, so that's negative 3y plus 3y, and that's equal to the right-hand side, which becomes 6 minus negative 12, which is 6 plus 12. Finally, negative 3y plus 3y is 0, so we're left with 0 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side we have 6 plus 12, which is 18. And at this stage, we stop. Indeed, we've reached something which at first seems absurd. 0 equals to 18. Clearly, 0 isn't equal to 18, and we have a mathematical contradiction. And when that happens, it means that there are no solutions to this pair of simultaneous equations. And so we would stop there. But rather than leaving it at that, let me try and explain this a little bit further. Remember that each of the two equations we have here can be thought of as a line equation, which is written in its standard form, also called general form. And so let's see what happens if we draw both of these lines on the same xy grid. And so for that I'll do a small xy grid at the bottom of the page here. In fact it will be very small indeed, I'll draw something like this. That's my y-axis, and that's my x-axis. There we go, x and y. And I should say, if you're uncomfortable drawing a line equation from its line in standard form, I'll write in grey, and I'll start with the first equation here, e1. So its equation is x minus y, which equals to negative 4. To draw it, we make a small table of values, something looking like this, so that will be for x, that column will be for y, and I write a 0 here, and in the next row I write a 0 here. Now here's the whole idea. If x were equal to 0 in this line equation, then this first term would disappear and we'd be left with negative y equals to negative 4, which would mean that y would equal to 4. On the other hand, if y were equal to 0 in this line equation, then the y term we have here would disappear, and that means that x would equal to negative 4. So we'll have negative 4 right there. Okay, well this first row, 0, 4, tells us the lines y-intercept. So I'll just say 4 is right here, 
There we go. And the second row we have here tells us the line's x-intercept. And so that would be negative 4 right there. There we go. And so that first line looks something like this. OK, that's x minus y equals to negative 4. I now do the same for the second line equation we have. So that's 3x minus 3y equals to 6. And I should be able to fit that here. Let's see, 3x minus 3y equals to 6. And I create the same table of values with x and y, 0 and 0. OK. Now, if x equals to 0 in our line equation here, the x term we have here will disappear, and we'll be left with negative 3y equals to 6, which would mean that y equals to 6 divided by negative 3, which would be negative 2. And if y were equal to 0 in this second line equation, then the negative 3y we have here would disappear, and we'd be left with 3x equals to 6. And if 3x equals to 6, then x equals to 2. So this second line has y-intercept 0, negative 2, which I'll say is right here. There we go, that's negative 2. And it has x-intercept 2, 0, which is going to be right here. There we go. And so drawing that line, we're now faced with the second line, which should look something like this. That's 3x minus 3y equals to 6. OK, now although this sketch is far from being perfect, Hopefully you can appreciate that the two lines I've just drawn are parallel, and consequently, they will never intersect. Remember, when solving a pair of simultaneous equations like these, the solutions x and y we find can be thought of as the x and y coordinates of the point of intersection of the two lines that we were given. But in this case, those two lines are parallel lines, so they'll never intersect, and the pair of simultaneous equations will therefore not have a solution. And there we go. When we reach a result like 0 equals to 18, so it could be 0 equals to negative 3 or 0 equals to 20, whichever it is, when we reach a mathematical contradiction like this one, it means the simultaneous equations have no solutions. In turn, it means that the corresponding lines are parallel. OK, now before moving on and looking into the case with an infinite number of solutions, let me show you what the mathematical contradiction would look like if instead of using the method of elimination like we did here, we use the method of substitution. And so I'll just make myself a tiny bit of space right here, and I'll specify that here we use the method of elimination. Elimination. There we go. And so now we'll use the method of substitution. There we go. All right, so starting from the same two equations, and in fact, I'll quickly copy them. Those were x minus y equals to negative 4. That was my first equation, e1. And 3x minus 3y equals to 6. That's the second equation. OK, well, if I were using the method of substitution to solve these, I think I would use the first equation and make x the subject. So if I do that, I'll say equation 1, two dots. Well, equation 1 can be rearranged to make x the subject by adding y to both sides in which case equation 1 would look like this, x equals to y minus 4. Done. We've now made x the subject in equation 1. Now we turn to the other equation, the one we haven't used so far, so in this case that would be equation 2, and we copy it, but we replace the x that we have inside it by the expression we just found, so y minus 4. So equation 2 would become 3 times in parentheses y minus 4 minus 3y equals to 6. Remember, all I've done here is copy the second equation, but I replaced the x that I had here by y minus 4, which led to this. I now distribute this 3 across that pair of parentheses, which leads us to 3y minus 12 minus 3y equals to 6. And I'm sure you can see that if we gather the y's here, we have 3y minus 3y, which cancel each other out. So I can cross those out like so. And we're just left with negative 12 equals to 6. And again, that's a mathematical contradiction. Notice here that when we use the method of substitution, we won't necessarily get 0 equals to something. Instead, we could reach one number equals to a different number. But the conclusion is the same. And in fact, you may notice that if you were to add 12 to both sides of this, and I could write that underneath here in gray, if I add 12 to the left and 12 to the right, then on the left-hand side we'll have negative 12 plus 12, which is 0, and on the right-hand side, we'll have 6 plus 12, which is 18. So we'd have 0 equals to 18, just as we did before. 
But all that to say that as soon as you reach a contradiction like 0 equals to 18, or like negative 12 equals to 6, then you're dealing with parallel lines and the pair of simultaneous equations doesn't have a solution. And in fact, I'll box that here and no solutions. There we go. Okay, now that that's done, let's move on to the second scenario, example 2. And this time, let's say we have to solve 2x minus 6y equals to 8, and 3x minus 9y equals to 12. Well, again, I'd start by naming each of these two equations. So that's e1, and that's e2. And if I were to solve these by elimination, I think I'd make sure that I have as many x's in both of these equations. And looking at these, well, the least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So if I multiply this first equation by 3, I'll have 6x. And if I multiply the second equation by 2, then I'd have 6x in this as well. So let's go ahead. I'll just write that. I'll multiply e1 by 3, so 3 times e1, and I multiply e2 by 2, so that's 2 times e2. There we go. All right, well, multiplying the left-hand side of e1 by 3, we'll have 3 times 2x, which is 6x, minus 3 times 6y, so that's minus 18y. I'll just write that, so that's 6x minus 18y, which will equal to 3 times the right-hand side, so that's 3 times 8, which is 24. And that's our new equation 1. I carry on, but this time I multiply the second equation by 2. So taking care of its left-hand side, we'll have 2 times 3x, which is 6x, minus 2 times 9y, so that's minus 18y. So that's 6x minus 18y. And that will equal to 2 times the right-hand side, so that's 2 times 12, which is 24. And that's our new equation 2. And now that we have as many x's in both of these line equations, to eliminate the x's, we'll subtract one equation from the other. And it doesn't matter whether you do e2 minus e1 or e1 minus e2, and I'll just say that we'll do e1 minus e2. And in doing so, let's see, the left-hand side will have 6x minus 6x, which is 0, and we'll have negative 18y minus negative 18y. And just to avoid a sign error, I'll write that out. That's negative 18y minus negative 18y. And on the right-hand side, well, we'll have 24 minus 24, which is just 0. Now let's tidy this left-hand side up. Since when we subtract something negative, it turns into an addition, this becomes negative 18y plus 18y equals to 0. Finally, this negative 18y and this positive 18y cancel each other out, leaving us with the result 0 equals to 0. And that's where we stop. Now in this case, although this is perfectly true, 0 is equal to 0, when we first see this, we may be a bit confused. But what this result means is that this pair of simultaneous equations has an infinite number of solutions. Infinite number of solutions. And I'll go ahead and box that. There we go. And to understand why that is, let me quickly draw these two lines on an xy grid. And so I'll do that down here. There we go. I'll quickly draw my xy grid, x and y. And just as I did here, I'll create tables of values for these two line equations. So let's see, for 2x minus 6y equals to 8, I'll have my table of values. Remember, that's x, y, and I write 0 here followed by 0 here, and now if x equals to 0, then this 2x in this line equation would disappear and would be left with negative 6y equals to 8. And if we have negative 6y equals to 8, well, that turns into y equals to negative 8 over 6, which is the same as y equals to negative 4 thirds. So I'll quickly write that here. If x equals to 0, y equals to negative 4 thirds. On the other hand, if y equals to 0 in this line equation, then this negative 6y term will disappear and we'll be left with 2x equals to 8. And if 2x equals to 8, well then x must be equal to 4. So we write that here. Okay, well this first point 0, negative 4 thirds is the line's y-intercept. And I'll say it's right here. There we go, negative 4 thirds. And this second point with coordinates 4, 0 is the line's x-intercept. And I'll say that's over here, right there. And so drawing the line passing through those two points, that first line looks something like this. 
that's the line, 2x minus 6y equals to 8. Done. Next, taking care of the second line equation we have, this 3x minus 9y equals to 12. And let's see, I'll write that here. I have 3x minus 9y equals to 12. I make my table of values in the same way, x and y. Write a 0 here and a 0 here. And now I carry on. If x were equal to 0, then this first term, 3x, would disappear, and we'd be left with negative 9y equals to 12. And if negative 9y equals to 12, well, that quickly turns into y equals to negative 12 over 9, which is the same thing as negative 4 thirds. And so I can write that here, negative 4 thirds. On the other hand, in this line equation, if y were equal to 0, then the 9y we have here would disappear, and we'd be left with 3x equals to 12. And if 3x equals to 12, then x equals to 4. And looking at this, we quickly notice that that's exactly the same table of values as the one we had for the first line. In other words, this second line has the same y-intercept and the same x-intercept. And the line itself is coincident with the first line, meaning that it lies exactly on top of the other. And because the solution to this pair of simultaneous equations can be thought of as the x and y coordinates of the point of intersection between these two lines, if the two lines are coincident, meaning if one line lies on top of the other, then there's an infinite number of points at which they intersect. Since every single point along the length of the two lines is shared by the two of them. And so when we're faced with a solution like 0 equals to 0, it means there's an infinite number of solutions. Finally, just as I did previously, I started this first example by solving using the method of elimination. And in fact, I'll write that here. This was done using the method of elimination. And if we were to solve it using the method of substitution, then we wouldn't get the zero equals to zero directly. And so let me finish this video by showing you what the result would look like for an infinite number of solutions when using the method of substitution. And I'll do that in the far right-hand side here, and I'll just write at the top, substitution. There we go. Okay, well again, our starting point is 2x minus 6y equals to 8, that's equation 1. And 3x minus 9y equals to 12, that's equation 2. Now, let's say I were to use this first equation to make x the subject. And so I'm using equation 1 here, there we go. And to rearrange this, I could start by adding 6y to both sides of the equation, so that I'm only left with the x's on the left-hand side. So let's see what that would look like. Starting from 2x minus 6y equals to 8, adding 6y to both sides, we'd have 2x equals to 6y plus 8. Next, since x is being multiplied by 2, I could divide both sides of this equation by 2, which would lead to x equals to 6y divided by 2, which would be 3y plus 8 divided by 2, which would be 4. And so at this stage, we've used equation 1 to make x the subject. So we move to equation 2, and we copy equation 2, but we replace the x we have here by the expression for x we just found, 3y plus 4. And so let's see, that would be 3 times 3y plus 4 minus 9y equals to 12. Now distributing this 3 across this pair of parentheses, we'll have 3 times 3y which is 9y, plus 3 times 4, which is 12. So that's 9y plus 12, minus 9y equals to 12. And now gathering the y's we have here, we have 9y minus 9y, which cancel each other out. And so we're left with 12 equals to 12. And that's what the result would look like if we solve it using the method of substitution. But let me insist, that result has exactly the same conclusion. As soon as we reach a result looking like 0 equals to 0 or 12 equals to 12, so it could be negative 3 equals to negative 3 or 27 equals to 27, then the pair of simultaneous equations we have has an infinite number of solutions. Graphically, we're dealing with coincident lines, which means that one of the two lines lies exactly on top of the other. And there you have it. Now you may notice, of course, that if you were to subtract 12 from both sides of this equation, then you'd reach the 0, 0 we found when using the method of elimination. Nevertheless, it's good to get a visual on the different types of solutions we may be faced with when working with simultaneous equations which have either no solutions or an infinite number of solutions. And there we go. 
That's it for this tutorial.